Hey guys, thanks for following along. Usually I'm building aircraft, this time we're building a wild pool. It sits on the top floor of a house, 24 feet deep in the water. A floor moves up and down in the pool and literally can come out of the water to turn it into a dance floor or just a couple feet deep if I got little kids in the pool. We're gonna show you how we do some quick connects, scuba diving connects for it. We have windows that see through into the pool. We got some crazy engineering with concrete that spans clear out over the backyard sitting on a single column. The pool actually sits over a garage. So we're gonna show you how we engineer so cars can drive under the pool. There's a lot of crazy things we got to do. Big craning, big rebar, big construction, and a ton of engineering. I hope you follow along. There's lots of little tricks we got to do along the way. This is in Utah. It's gonna be able to freeze. And so I need this system to auto winterize. So I'm gonna show you some big underground water vaults that drain all the pipes every time a pump turns off, either from me or from a power outage so that this pool can be run 365 days a year. We're doing radiant floor heating, all kinds of fun things, some waterfalls, wet walls. Follow along, I hope you like this. You know, I love engineering, I hope you like this. As soon as we get this house done, we're gonna get back to building a few airplanes. I'm actually building airplanes while building the house, so I hope you follow along all of it. Catch up on the old stuff, follow the new. We love you guys, back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, it's a big day. Everything's in. Our gas mainline trunks, our pool trunks, our boiler rooms, plumbing, electrical set in, a rebar floor that almost looks like it was laser set. It is absolutely spot on. Just a little more time to get it that way. It's a big day of concrete between 140, 150 yards all today. You guys know the drill. We have a lot to do. Let's get back to work. just gonna finish breaking this out and cleaning it up so I can get my footing to start underneath his first block right up touching to make sure our concrete plums all the way out so a few more minutes we'll be ready all right guys I'm gonna interrupt this video twice to do two things one I'm gonna give one announcement right now and another announcement a little bit more along the way of how I'm gonna give away a bunch of stuff for Christmas and how you guys can get a chance to win it while simultaneously helping grow general aviation. And I'm gonna do a second announcement right now first. <laughs> I'm gonna do the second announcement first, I guess. I have been keeping a secret with my partners and I as we have been working on doing something desperately needed. Throughout the country, we were watching airports close one after another. Big airports pushing out general aviation, closing down leases, not renewing leases for hangars. And it is a catastrophic event that has become a trend and we want to try and stop it. And I am super excited to say, after years of effort, not only have we built one of the greatest airport boards you could ever dream of having for general aviation here at Spanish Fort, but also the city that loves our hometown airport, the community right down from the mayor to senior development, everybody, to now introduce what we would like to bring to the small town airport is a massive, FBO hangar development 
on the entire side of a runway that was never touched. For decades, everything was built on one side. We are now gonna build a Paty Aviation business park on an untouched, free reign, whatever we want to build the funnest, friendliest general aviation airport in the country right here at Spanish Fork. So I'm asking a favor. I want to make sure that our airport has all the things you want to see in it. Our master plan, we'll show you some of the pictures right now, hangars from Cubs to giant jets. We want this airport, even if you don't live real close, we want you to want to put your plane here Bring your aviation business here. We are so business friendly and aviation friendly at Spanish Fork. Give us a call, reach out. We're gonna show you all the reasons why you're gonna want your aviation business on a field that not only accepts you, but welcomes you like family. And that's what we're doing at the Payday Aviation Business Park. So I will be telling you more about it along the way. Right now, we have pool tables, rec rooms, sleeping quarters if you stop in. Of course, we're gonna give you the lowest fuel prices. This is about an aviation community we wanna build, and we want an FBO that you want to fly to as your destination and hang out with us, fly with us. Maybe take your cub that's sitting in the flatland somewhere, relocate it here, and park it in a hangar with 20 other cubs that like to fly the Rocky Mountains. Whatever it is, we want to hear your input and thoughts right from the restaurant, all the way down to the sleeping quarters and the game rooms. This is a place to hang out for general aviation. Give us your thoughts. Love you guys. Back to work. All right, guys, we are working on the retaining wall today. I'm really excited to get the footings in. We're forming them today. We dug them a couple days before. So concrete, drainage, glue, rebar. We're gonna make sure this wall doesn't go anywhere and I can forget about it forever. So you guys know the drill. Let's get back to work. All right, today could not have gone more awesome for several reasons. One, we stayed up most of the night and got everything ready, which made it easy. Two, I had an army of concrete guys that did all the work. I felt like I was more the guy running around, double checking, bringing bottled water. I was like a sidekick. <laughs> I wasn't doing a lot, but uh, somehow I'm exhausted, but stripping forms and helping out where I can. While they were pouring this, I was jumping on the backside, finishing tying up rebar on 180 feet of footing and getting the final prep done on it. So I was jumping between this pour and that pour. This floor, to give you an idea, crazy. I say 14 inches thick and it doesn't really ring true until I see it. I just pulled the form off. To give you an idea, an average sidewalk is three and a half to four inches, which is that. That is the thickness of the slab to span the distances I needed for the space under the garage. So that's insane. <laughs> this ended up being a hundred yards. We did not quite 50 yards on the back. So we poured 150 yards since first thing this morning to now. I've chalked all the lines. I'm keeping a close eye on the temperature and the time from when we hit certain stages of the pour. This pour went on for about six hours between all the trucks being spaced out so we could just flow across. So I have to saw cut this floor in sequence with the time and temperature so that I don't cut it too early and cause the edges of the saw blade to chip the edges of the concrete as it cuts through the score lines. And if I wait too long, the concrete is gonna crack on its own, not where I cut a track in it to force a crack where I want it. So the chalk lines are done. We're gonna wash the clock. We're gonna come back, cut these tonight in series. We always tend to do a little art. So Chandra row M plus C, Patey, heart, A-A-D-D. -D. And no, that isn't A-D-D or A-D-H-D done wrong. That's our kids, Alexandra, Ashlyn, Dylan, and Dex. Hey guys, I'm gonna pause this video right here and tell you guys how much I appreciate you this holiday season and Christmas is coming up. I hope you're spending it with your family. And I wanted to tell you something I wanna to do to give back to all of you and how you can join me in giving back flight to others. I'm gonna give away a bunch of things from some great friends in aviation. Garmin sent me some great things, so watches and GPSs, 
Also, Watt has given me some really cool, super bright lights for your aircraft. Bunch of other little gifts I won't get into right now. I also am gonna give a day away if any of you are interested, and if not, I'll give you something else. But let me pay for you to come out to Utah, hang out in the hangar, go fly in a helicopter or a plane or something, see part of our beautiful state. I'd love to see some of you if you're interested in that. I'm gonna be giving away a bunch of things in a little entry, and what I'm gonna ask is that we turn it all around full circles. The way this is going to work is if you're interested in any gear of mine, I am continuing my first flight program. It has been going so well. We have given away thousands of dollars to people and paid for their first flight experience. We want to do that for hundreds of more people. So as I've talked before, shirts, hats, gear, whatever I have, we use part of that money to give back to general aviation. So here's what I thought I'd do. Anyone who's buying any of my gear this holiday season, we're gonna enter you in to win a variety of awesome products from people like Garmin and Watt and others. If this goes like I think it will, we're gonna put hundreds of people into an aircraft for the first time and grow general aviation. And if that works, then I wanna step it up each and every time and see if we can give away more and more and more to help grow general aviation, make sure that we always have places to fly, mountains to land on, and airports without crazy fees. We need more people in aviation to ensure our freedom of flight. So join me in paying for First Flight, pay the First Flight program, buy some gear, we'll turn around, send people flying, and give you a chance to win a bunch of cool products. I hope you like it. Check it out on our website, mikepity.com. Check out for details, how to enter to win, how to get gear. I really hope this takes off, so um, I'm crossing my fingers. Seriously, the gifts I'm gonna give away this round are awesome but I'm really hoping it takes off and we can give away bigger and bigger gifts and pay for more and more first flights, sharing the full circle. Love you guys, back to work. This is the other side of the core. Cool equipment room is way in the back. You see the size of these forms, we'll pull those later. I could not be happier. I like things a certain way and these concrete guys knocked it out of the park. I kept pulling string lines, checking level, I set a lot of grade markers late, late last night to give a lot of reference points. The floor is so true. I got just a little bit of slope all coming out to the front door and from the sides to the front doors. If I'm hosing it out, I'm not gonna have any puddles or low spots. Ah, I'm happy. I can't wait to start building concrete going up because we still have concrete going all the way to the top. Everything on this end of the house is concrete to hold the upper patio. We got some cantilever, giant concrete beams, a lot of cool stuff coming to hang a deck out beyond it. So that's it, we got a lot to do. I'm gonna go eat with my family. We'll come back, get back to work. <laughs> We got the wall all built in one day, surprisingly. Now that isn't really fair to say because we spent a day prepping, digging the dirt out, an entire day putting up forms, rebar, and then poured concrete the next morning. I uh, wasn't able to do any more on it that day. But then in one day, we put up 825 linear feet of wall, almost five feet high, four feet. I'm gonna go one more block. It will be just about five feet. That's uh, about 120,000 pounds of block. I did it with me and all my wife, all my kids, all do dove into it. And we hired um, some help from 
some of the guys that are doing the concrete work on my house and they came out on a weekend and gave us one day and between all of us we stacked this whole wall in a day definitely my kids will be feeling it for a week and hopefully remembering it for a lifetime so hard work uh, pays off it's fun to see something like this but anyway we got a lot more to do we got backfill to do i wouldn't go any higher than this actually this is a couple blocks higher than i'd like to do without backfilling along the way i do have a lot of rounds that can't tip and corners where all my stairs are that lock the wall from tipping back the wall staggers back and if you go too high you'll get over the center point of the bottom block and the whole wall will topple so it's glued it's hammer drilled the bottom blocks have, have been hammer drilled down into the concrete footing fiberglass pin set so they'll never rust out and then we built up from there all right guys we got the retaining wall up and i'm now building some braces they're just temporary they're going between the three sets of five foot wide stairs and the stairs rather than tapering back to help hold the slope of the dirt the stairs i wanted perfectly straight up and down walls and so if i go to push dirt on them they're going to lean and so i'm just building some temporary braces at the back walls of the stairs then i can push all the dirt compact it back fill it really tight and then pour a set of concrete stairs in between and that won't allow the walls to lean in. So there I got three to do. Let's get them installed. That's work. All right, it went in a little tighter than I anticipated, but that's a perfect fit. When I backfill, there's no way these ends of this stairwell wall is going to lean in. So we'll backfill the whole thing. This is temporary, it can be broken out, and then I'll pour concrete up. This is a simple little trick. This is wire, rebar, tie wire. You can just pick up at any hardware store. And a duplex now. Works perfect if you use a hammer drill with a 3 16 bit. What this does, the wire will, is pretty soft and it will squish while the nail goes in. Then you don't have to use really expensive concrete bolts. Leave the duplex out just enough that you can hook it and remove it, but it won't move. Now I can backfill, if dirt hits the back, it won't tip this over. I can still pull it apart and remove it. So simple trick, they won't move. Back to work, guys. The reason you bend it over is if you don't, the nail's gonna try and keep pushing the wire into the hole. And what will happen is the wire's gonna go back and forth, bind up, and then the nail can't go full depth. It'll bind up on a wrinkled wire. All right, guys, we're part way through the backfill. This is the process, but what we do, we've got a drain pipe in the bottom of this. That drain pipe started with a piece of fabric mesh that we glued halfway under the bottom block wall to the footing. It's why I like to use an actual footing. It's one of many reasons why you like to use a concrete footing rather than just a gravel bed. Really give a good anchor foundation for it. This fabric is glued under the bottom block and then the block is pinched on it. So glue and weight. And then as it comes out, we have a round perforated pipe and that perf pipe, we don't want dirt to get into. If it gets really wet, we had big rains. It would wash into the rock, eventually clog the rock, eventually rush down into the pipe, clog the pipe. When I get ready to add the next layer, I'll dig this back, get a good six to eight inches of overlap. The critical thing, and it is really critical in Utah, why we have to have this big water separation is any water gets through to the wall if we didn't do this that water would just be bound up in the soil against the back of this wall and we get these winter freezes where during the day everything can melt and at night it goes to a hard freeze and if we have this soil saturated with water and pushed right against this wall and then it got wet and soaked up against it and then at night we get 10 below zero on this side of this concrete, it's instantly gonna transfer. This water will expand like an ice cube would. As this soil freezes, it has to go somewhere. It won't push that way. It's gonna try and push the wall over. So what would happen is the wall would push out 
and loose soil that isn't quite frozen will drop down in the gap. And then the next time it does it, it will push out, the soil will drop in and the wall can't go back. And then every time it frees and expands and contracts, the wall moves, dirt falls or gravel falls in its place and it just works out and out and out. 10% more time, 200% better project. And that's just about the way it is with aircraft, walls, anything. That last 10% makes 200% of the difference. Back to work. Getting closer. It's our last geo grid line, the cap to block the drain rock. Felt there, tucked up against the wall and then folded over the top. And we got one more block to go on top and then a pour in place concrete cap with rebar. All right, guys, I really hope you like this kind of random building a house. I know I'm just building retaining walls and a pool, but it's engineering and I love it. And I hope you like following along. But most importantly, I hope you thought about things you can do and ideas you can send my way for the best FBO in the country because that's what we want to build. And also order up some gear for Christmas, maybe friends, maybe for yourself. Get a chance to win a bunch of gear prizes. Check it out on the link below, mikepady.com for the gear, the giveaway. And don't forget to check out our FBO or if you're interested in hangars or your business, coming to the Pady Aviation Business Park, reach out to my partner and I'll put you his link right here. Thanks guys, we'll see you soon. Back to work.